Hi, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in January. It's a wrap-up. I slacked so bad with wrap-ups in... 2020 like I just stopped filming them for a while and then I did a fall wrap-up and that was like a few months worth of books and there was so many books to talk about so I'm back to the monthly wrap-ups because I can't I can't slack on them again because I do want to talk about all the books that I read but waiting and doing a bigger video at the end is just way more of a pain because even though I love talking about books and filming these wrap-ups they're pretty exhausting to film especially when you're talking about a lot of books. I am going to include a few of the books that I read in the end of December because I filmed my fall wrap up about halfway through December so I do have some books still to talk about from that time. So let's start with those. So the first two books I have to talk about are Playboy Princes and Poison Throne and they're the second and third in the Royals of Arbonne Academy series and this is by Jamin Eve and Tate James and this is about a girl, Violet, who is an orphan and basically gets plucked from obscurity on the scholarship to go to the most elite royal school in the world and this takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where now the world has been like reshaped into monarchies so it's modern monarchies everywhere basically finds herself drawn between like the two most powerful princes in the world i gave the first book maybe like two or three stars <laughs> the second two books were like two and one star i think like this series was just not for me because like I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it was just really hard for me to get through this book because I just did not find myself wanting to read it. And the love interests were very frustrating. And this is a bit of a spoiler if you're interested, like, uh, I guess just like skip this part. But she was stuck between, in a love triangle between these two guys. And she ended up having both of them as her boyfriends in the end, but the guys were like, like they weren't like a true couple it was just like i guess i guess it was like a reverse harem which is fine i think i would have kind of liked it if like the if they all ended up being a thing maybe a little bit better and i know like different romances work differently like that's not how every reverse harem romance is going to be but i don't know that's kind of like what i had expected between them and it maybe would have made the the book a little bit better for me but just even beyond that romance <sighs> frustrating me um it like the way that the events were written about in the post-apocalyptic world I felt like wasn't built up enough and like I don't know it just seemed like a little bit too cheesy to be believable which yeah that's like getting a romance sometimes but it just didn't it just didn't work for me that's kind of what it boils down to this, this romance didn't work for me so I rated it kind of low but <laughs> it is what it is. Then the next book I read is Keepers of the Lost City's Exile and this is about Sophie who finds out that she is an elf after knowing that she can read minds her whole life but never telling anybody never knowing anybody else that has this ability she finds out that she's an elf and is whisked away to the elven lands and there she learns that she just might be more powerful and more important in the elven lands than she ever believed i just adore this series it really is one of my new favorite middle grades it has such great like found family and of course we have the chosen one trope but i really enjoy but that's a girl chosen one because i feel like all the chosen one stories i read growing up were all guys <laughs> um and i really just enjoy seeing like sophie's journey to kind of learn who she is and her powers and of course there's a the magic school and i just think it's so cleverly written that anyone at any age can enjoy this and this is definitely one of my new favorite middle grades i'm really excited to continue reading on with the series because i just have adored everything and the second book that i read features an alicorn which is like a unicorn but with wings and Sophie and this unicorn have a special telepathic connection and I just absolutely adored adored that sort of like animal connection trope so of course I gave this book five stars because I just feel like I love all the side characters all the friendships the way that family and found family is explored and it's just so just does such a good job of portraying these emotions and these heart-wrenching things in a way that anyone can get get the message and I just like really enjoy the adventures that they go on it's so wholesome and fun while also having some important conversations so five stars and the next book on this series i think i own books one through one, two, three, four, five and i think there's eight total so i'm gonna hopefully try and read more of the series later because i just found myself flying through these first two books because i love them so much then next i read a court of mist and fury this is the second book in the aquatar series i have just talked so much about aquatar on my channel these past Few months i have a reading vlog for aquatar and akamath up at this point and my ones for aqua war and aqua fast will be up as well as my aqua vlog 
<laughs> if you don't know what the series that I am talking about is, like, I just feel like this part is just kind of funny. Anyways, five stars. One of my favorite books of all time. I really enjoyed my reread. It's just such a special book to me as I deal so much with healing and trauma. We have a whole live show discussing it. Please check it out. It's just, it just remains an all-time favorite for me. Then next I read The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I read this one on audio and I ended up giving it four stars. In this town, every year they sacrifice a baby to the witch in the woods and the people in this town think that they need to sacrifice this baby in order to protect them from the woods and the witch in the bog. However, every year the witch in the bog has been taking these babies and feeding them starlight and bringing them to other towns with families where they will be more happy and she doesn't understand why this town leaves these babies to be sacrificed every year. Every year she takes care of them until one year she finds a baby and she, instead of feeding it starlight, accidentally feeds the baby moonlight and so she becomes imagined and the witch takes in this baby to raise as her own so that she can help with the magic that she takes in and it's the story of Luna, this baby, growing up with this magic and as well as a witch and these other characters around them. I give this book four stars. I think it's a middle grade that almost doesn't read like a middle grade. Um, I feel like the message can be taken far and wide. Like it's very allegorical and has a lot of interesting messages about the way that adults act, but I did really enjoy the way the whole magic system worked. I loved the side characters like Rog and the, the little dragon and it, it very much read like a, an old wives tale, is that what it is, or like a, a folklore tale or something like that, where it's like a seemingly innocent story, but it sends a, tells some sort of message in the end, so it was very whimsical in that way. But again, also dealt with some very serious topics, so I really enjoyed my read on the audiobook for this one, so it was four stars. The next up is Brave, Jennifer L. Armentrout, and this is the last book in the Wicked Trilogy, which is actually being adapted. So they have like whole cast and everything. So I was scrolling through Jennifer L. Armentrout's Instagram, seeing all the characters, and I'm really excited for whenever that comes out. I'm not sure when exactly that will be, but I will be watching. And in this series, we follow Ivy Morgan, and she is a fae hunter, part of the order, and when a new fae hunter comes to town, they basically butt heads, but there is dangerous fae lurking around every corner. So they have to team up to face this threat. And I just love everything that Jennifer L. Armitage writes. This series is definitely more on the new adult side with a little bit more steaminess than her YA novels. Again, I just kind of love everything that she writes. And in this third book, we deal a lot with the trauma that Ivy has gone through in the second book. And so I really enjoyed that. We got to examine a little bit more of like the mental health of a character after something traumatic in a fantasy world happens. Um, that's a part of the reason why I love Sarah J. Mass's books as well. So I felt like this book handled it well and also was a very satisfying conclusion to the series. I love all the side characters, especially Tink. He's great. He's just like this brownie that loves Amazon Prime. <laughs> I felt like everything was wrapped up very satisfyingly and the plot with the Fae Hunters and the Fae kind of came to just a very good conclusion. So I get this one 4.5 stars. Then I'm moving on to my 2021 20, January reads. So we are finally actually in January this time. And the first book that I read is The Promised Neverland by Kayu Shirari. And I own this manga, but it's currently, my mom mailed it to me because I left it in Florida when I was there for Christmas. So I don't have it to hold up. But this is a new manga series that I started because apparently a K-pop boy group that I like, Hypen, is basing their music video storyline on this manga. And in this first one, I didn't really make any connections but apparently like it eventually becomes connected but there's so many mangas in this series that i don't i don't know when it will but i'm i love this one it's five stars it's very chilling if you're looking for almost like a horror type feel to your manga this one is for you because it was actually really creepy i don't think it's classified as a horror manga or anything like that but i i found it very creepy and very like shocking and i'm really interested to continue on with the series and it follows these children that live at gracefield house and they feel like they're perfectly well taken care of and under the care of a woman they call mom they've all enjoyed a comfortable life at this orphanage until one day emma and norman discover a dark secret outside of the orphanage that they've always stayed inside and the dark truth of the outside world that they've always been forbidden from seeing and things unfold from there the art style again was great and i'm i was just like so shocked at what i was reading and it really just pulled me in from the first page like i really really want to continue on with this one i got like the first seven or eight volumes for christmas so i definitely want to continue on with this series and see where things go because 
really crazy. The next book that I read is Flames of Chaos by Amelia Hutchins and this is a fantasy romance. Please be aware this one is definitely for 18 plus readers only because it is very explicit and please look up content and trigger warnings because it has like everything like the spice level definitely like off the chart but also like there's a lot of content warning for like toxic behavior um as well as other things so just be very aware of that before you go into the series so aria and her sisters are a hecate witch is where they have descended from the goddess hecate the mother of all witches as they say and they return to this town of haven falls in the human realm which is kind of like a portal to the nine realms and nothing is what they seem including nox who is someone that has come from the nine realms apparently to help solve the issues that are happening in this town in the human realm and sparks fly when nox and aria meet and they are trying to solve the mystery of where aria's twin sister has disappeared to and nox has his own ulterior motives for being in haven fall Arya is his sworn enemy, but there is some sort of attraction between the two of them that pull them together and makes his very clear-cut plans very hard to execute. This series is really interesting because we have these two characters that are like clearly attracted to one another, but with the politics of their world are always trying to one-up one another and outmaneuver one another, and I'm on the third book now and that's still happening. I ended up rating this book four stars. I think like content-wise, I would have maybe rated it lower, like maybe like three stars, but it was so entertaining and like the spice was really good so I ended up giving it I would have given it like five stars on that end and typically I just write off of pure enjoyment but I felt like the right the writing held me back enough in some points that I did feel like I had to take off a star so I kind of settled for a four star and like typically like I don't have reservations about just rating something five stars if I enjoyed it but again because I, the writing was very choppy in some places that it took away some of my enjoyment like sometimes we would just bounce around and i wouldn't have a clear picture of like where all the characters were and something just didn't make sense with the transitions in that sort of sense was what i mean with choppy writing and as well as the pacing like i felt like nox and aria and then a day were like encountering each other again and again and again and i'm like i feel like the all the events that happened like couldn't physically have ta taken place in one day but besides those issues that i had with it i did find it like wildly entertaining but please be aware that it is very dark i think that nox is very toxic behavior and he kind of annoys me at some point but i'm so interested to see like where these two characters who are constantly at one another's throats are going to see that i'm like drawn in and entertained so it keeps me going reading this series and i do enjoy it so those are my somewhat conflicted feelings this first book takes place mostly in the human realm so it's interesting to kind of see like what aria's powers are and what nox's powers are and kind of like how they how their little game of cat and mouse starts off I finally have a physical book to hold up and that is for These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong and this was the first book that I started in 2020 and I absolutely adored this one. I was on a live show on Chanel's channel over at Chanel Time for the Crusty Book Club in January so I got to discuss my thoughts and feelings with everyone so please check that out. I will link it down below. I had so much fun and I it just made me like appreciate this book even more because it was a lot of fun to discuss so when a book is a lot of fun to discuss to me that means that I had a good time. This is a, I'm going to call it a loose Romeo and Juliet retelling set in 1920s Shanghai. I think if readers go in with the expectations that this is an exact Romeo and Juliet retelling that they will maybe find something different in this book. So I just kind of want to put it out there that it is like a very loose interpretation kind of with the author's like own plot happening. Juliet has recently returned to her homeland of Shanghai in the year 1926. She is heir to the Scarlet Gang, one of Shanghai's most prominent gangs. Their only rivals in power are the White Flowers, a Russian-run gang whose heir apparent is Roma, Juliet's first love. However, after he betrayed her, Juliet has scorned him and his ilk forever. Their blood feud runs generations deep, but when a monster is set loose upon Shanghai, wreaking havoc and leaving a trail of bodies in its path, Juliet and Roma must set their differences aside in order to stop the mayhem and claim Shanghai for themselves. So this book was just so good. I loved all, all the historical context that was put in here, so I would kind of describe it as a historical fantasy because we are in this setting but there is a fantasy twist to it and I thought that the fantasy twist was 
very well executed in the fact that it just added a little something to the time period but it didn't it wasn't completely changing everything that happened in that time so we do have some flapper references of course and what i really found interesting to learn about was kind of the the melting pots that was shanghai in the 1920s there were a lot of people from different cultures like the white flowers were a russian gang and therefore like there were a lot of russian expats that were coming to shanghai in order to escape the bolshevik regime and a lot of other cultures as well so we also have some colonialism going on because there were british and french people there as well. and this book touched upon like how shanghai was being carved up by these different groups um and as i well i found the monster in this book to be kind of like a metaphor for the colonialism at this time oh i give this five stars by the way and there was a lot of talking about of chinese nationalism and the growth of the communist party so again i just like enjoyed that this was a fun fiction book but yet i still feel like i learned some historical context from this and of course i like you know googled some things after just to be more informed on this time period i think that the setting was one of the strongest elements of this book gong really has a talent for writing these settings in such a descriptive way that you really feel like you understand and you know what it's like in this time period as well as kind of like having that very atmospheric feeling and 1920s shanghai is not a place that i have really ever read about before so i enjoyed the setting a lot and just in general her writing is captivating and enchanting and very very strong this is a debut novel and if this is like what she can do while well, she's still in college as an author nonetheless i just feel like she has such a promising career ahead of her and her writing really is gorgeous it is very good on the descriptions and it is flowery and lyrical at some times but not overpoweringly so so it just strikes that balance of between exposition and lyricism that i personally enjoy like i talked about um this does kind of like go off script from romeo and juliet it's not an exact retelling we do have juliet and roma and they are from rival gangs but this book kind of almost picks up i guess after there was a big betrayal which maybe is like a metaphorical death of some sort between the two characters so they had kind of already had their big love affair and ended up it ended up in flames essentially so at the beginning of the book we're trying to figure out like what had happened to drive them apart and we do have the other characters that are representative of the other characters in the shakespeare's play but again like things don't just unfold the exact same way in the play there's like a lot of gong's own plot incorporated into this it's really just kind of the setup that's based on romeo and juliet with these two characters from two rival gangs it was fun to kind of like see some like shakespeare lines incorporated into the book which i tabbed i think in orange i really enjoyed juliet's character she was so like forward and strong and she really knew what she wanted and she was not afraid to be ruthless in a time when women were told to be docile and especially like within the scarlet gang herself like a lot of people were maybe rooting for her cousin over her because her cousin is a man and so i just like enjoyed that she overcame those obstacles and that sexism in the time to really prove that she could be like this ruthless leader of the scarlet gang i did think that roma's character since he was a little bit more reserved did not stand out as strong to me and i'm hoping we get to see more of his side of the story and more of his characterization in future novels because i feel like for the, the majority of this novel like we did spend more time in juliet's perspective i also just like enjoy the side characters rosalind kathleen benedict and marshall there is a lot of really good representation in these characters as well and i I found like a lot of important topics were discussed through the side characters i almost want to say that this book almost has like a gothic horror type feel because of the monster in it like there were some pretty gruesome scenes in here and i really enjoyed that because i did not go into this expecting it so yeah i mean i just loved everything about this um i really like enjoyed talking about it on the live show and i can't wait to see what happens in the sequel because i think that it's just going to be fantastic Next up, I read A Court of Wings and Ruin. I don't know why I didn't pull out A Court of Wings and Ruin when I talked about it before. It's right here. I'm missing the cover because my dog ate it, but I'm going to be getting a new dust jacket of like the old ones soon. So anyways, so I reread A Court of Miss and Fury. I of course loved my reread. Five stars. I am going to have a vlog with like my in-depth book talk vlog style up on my channel soon. I just haven't had time to post it yet, but like be, be on the lookout for that if you are so inclined. I think I appreciated this book a lot more the second time that I read it because the first time I read it was right after Akabath when I was so focused on the romance between Reese and Feyre but in this third novel I feel like their romance takes a little bit of a backseat and we get to focus more on the plot of the world and the side characters and their stories so I 
have a new appreciation for this book after reading it when I'm not like so fixated on like them and their relationship and everything like that because in this book they are a little bit more established. The next book that I read is Ashes of Chaos by Amelia Hutchins and this is the sequel to Flames of Chaos. I again ended up giving this one four stars because of the kind of like entertainment mixed with the problems I have with the writing and I am going to continue on with the series because I do find it enjoyable. Um, and in the second one we go into the Nine Realms and we see Arya kind of really going on a cat and mouse chase with Nox and kind of everything that I said about the first book still rings true for the second book. We're just getting kind of more into like what it means for Arya to be a Hecate witch. Yeah, I'm just like along for the ride for this series because it's a lot of very dark and twisted fun. The next book that I read is Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab and this is Victoria Schwab's middle grade series, the Cassidy Blake series. Really enjoy it. I do want to point out I went to a book signing and if you think that Cassidy Blake's character is very similar to, um, oh, I forgot her name. Is it Sydney? No, Sydney is the older sister. Why can't I remember the girl's name? The the little girl in um, Vicious, like the 12 year old girl. Is it Sydney? Yeah, it's Sydney. And then Serena is her older sister. So very similar to Sydney's story in Vicious. And that's because Victoria Schwab said they kind of have the same origin story, but she wanted to explore what would happen if similar things happened to characters in different worlds and different settings, which I just found a very interesting tidbit. Tunnel of Bones. This is the sequel to City of Ghosts. And so in the sequel, Cassidy Blake and her ghost show hosting parents head to Paris. And from there, they explore the Paris catacombs. Cassidy, of course, has her ghost BFF Jacob along for the ride. And when they attract a poltergeist in the Paris catacombs, Cassidy and Jacob must stop it before it wreaks havoc on all of Paris. I am giving this one 4.5 stars. I just really adore this series. The ghost hunting aspect is like so fun. I like Cassie's character and kind of how she deals with things that, you know, come up against her because she's very young and has to deal with, you know, hunting down very, very scary ghosts. This book <laughs> made me want to go visit the Paris catacombs, even though I think I would be very terrified to be there. And especially like the way she wrote the poltergeist was like one of those like old timey horror school m movies horrifying and i was like oh this is this is a little bit frightening but this is supposed to be a middle grade book but again i just thought that it was paced so well and we got to explore what it means to like some heartwarming topics of friendship amongst the setting of scary ghosts wreaking havoc all over paris again i just like adore victoria schwab as an author one of my favorite authors. I do think I need to get my hands on a physical copy of the series because I do just love it. And if you're looking for an easy to read ghost story, this is definitely a series you should check out. I think the third book is out in March as well. So I will be hopefully picking that one up on audio when it comes out. Next, we have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. And this was my favorite book of the month. And it was just so fantastic. I, of course, gave it five stars. Here is the UK paperback I found, a uh, UK hardback I found um, on eBay even though it's out of print and I just like the first press had this and I'm obsessed. And this is the end pages. Um, I first thought it was the Waterstones edition but it, it's not. It's just the regular UK first edition. That's what that looks like. So I, I display it out on my bookshelf because it's beautiful. The Starless Sea. Zachary Ezra Rawlings is a video game graduate student and he loves to read in his spare time and he's in the university library when he discovers this book that is not in the library system and it has a beaky sword on it and he reads the book and he discovers a story from his childhood that happened to him was undoubtedly him that he had never told anybody in his life and from there he's set off on this journey to an underground library where he meets Dorian and Mirabelle who will forever change the course of his life. And I'm kind of just going to leave it at that because this is one of these like ephemeral, almost like cerebral type stories where you kind of just got to go along with it while you're reading and like observe every single detail because you never know what will be important. This book has the book within a book trope where we're actually reading the book that the characters are reading several different books at any points and we just find like the layers and layers from the storytelling. It's very clever, but definitely a book that you kind of like need to pay attention to because you just like never know like what is going to come back and be important. I did just like adore this book so much. Like the writing is just so lyrical and magical and like I just wanted it to be in this magical, mystical, 
underground library like the pictures that Morgan Stern paints with her words are just so beautiful and I think the imagery and the feeling that you get when you read about this like magical library place and like these legends and lores that are all connecting and kind of like the thing that these characters are experiencing it's like just like this feeling and I just love that feeling I feel like this is just a book about the love of stories and what it means to love reading and love discovering stories and it was just such a journey to read and it's, a, it's just a beautiful wonderful book so I loved it that is actually all that I have to talk about today so enjoy my end of December and January wrap up I will be trying to stick to posting wrap ups this year because I don't want to fall off the wagon of posting them again because I, like I said I want to have a chance to talk about all the books that I love and enjoy so if you have any thoughts on any of these books that I read or you just want to tell me what you read in January or you just want to say hi, maybe drop a little heart at the bottom and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.